G'day guys, Rook Shine here. Thanks for joining me for the news vlog. Today I've got a bit of a different episode because I'm going to be updating a lot of the stories we've been discussing over the last couple of days. And it's always good to see where some of these stories are at today. First up, a story I was talking about yesterday, which is around these farmers' protests that we're seeing all across Europe. And we saw in Brussels at the EU Parliament headquarters that farmers had started gathering overnight around the Parliament in somewhat of a blockade. Well, in the early hours of this morning, we've had action between the farmers and the police there taking uh, rubber bullets and hoses with water. Some people say water cannons, uh, you be the judge, against these farmers. And uh, there's been a few clashes. So this story is about looking at that. Chaos erupts in Brussels as rubber bullets fired at farmers protesting outside EU Parliament. Rubber bullets and water cannons were deployed against hundreds of European farmers protesting outside the EU Parliament building in Brussels on Thursday. The farmers threw eggs, set off fireworks and started fires near the building while demanding that European leaders stop punishing them with more taxes and rising costs imposed to finance the so-called green agenda. Fair enough, if you ask me. Uh, These are some images of what transpired. And uh, there's video as well. I just played the video of the, uh, the hosing down of farmers. <laughs> So yeah, that, that, this is all courtesy of clpress.fr. Uh, They've got a lot of good footage. They're covering these events, I believe. So uh, if you want to get more of this kind of footage, I would um, recommend going to that website or looking them up on social media and finding some of these clips. As you can see, the farmers being, were being hosed down there. Uh, reports of rubber bullets being fired into the crowd as well, as well as uh, farmers themselves setting off fireworks and fighting back by throwing stuff back at the police. So... A bit of action in terms of there's been arrests made, there's been clashes between the farmers and the police. In particular, this is around the EU Parliament. At one point, the police actually gave the farmers food. That's right, this, this video is going around at the moment where the police are offering farmers what looks like some type of biscuits or cookies. Um, some people are saying, why would you take, take that from the police? Well, it could be these particular members of the police are sympathetic to what the farmers are doing. But nonetheless, they are, of course, involved in enforcing uh, these things and firing um, the water cannons or rubber bullets at the farmers as well. But yes, very interesting. I will keep you updated on what's happening. Apparently, there's farmers in Portugal and Spain and other parts of Europe doing similar actions now as well. So this is a bit of a building up movement. And like I told you guys uh, yesterday, uh, I will be also going to... Um, Canberra next week for a farmers gathering that's happening there so that should be interesting. The next story I have is an update on a story that's been discussed widely today in the media and this uh, relates to a protest that happened in front of the Sydney Opera House during a vigil for the victims of the October 7th attack on October 9th I believe. So that day um, you know Israeli um, the flag was put on the Sydney Opera House and, uh, you know, people that were upset about this happening, especially the pro-Palestinian movement, turned up there to protest against that. And during that protest, there was a video that was filmed that became viral all around the world, especially, you know, very recently after the attacks took place on October 7th, right? So it was very fresh at that time. And this video went all around the world. And, and the contents of that video showed chants of gas the Jews. Now, since that time, it has been highly disputed as to what was actually said. And this became more complicated as raw footage started um, circulating related to these videos that really put into doubt what was said during that time. So the New South Wales police have also been conducting an investigation because they were criticized a lot for not taking action when such chants were being said. So they've had a vested interest in trying to you know, figure out what actually happened, were those chants said, who said them, and what charges need to be laid. So the latest is New South Police have, have come out and said that the chant that was said was actually not gas the Jews. So let me read the story for you and give you a bit of an update on this. New South Police says words gas the Jews not spoken at Sydney Opera House. Extensive forensic analy analysis of audio video files of a protest outside the Sydney Opera House on October 9th have led police to conclude the phrase gas the Jews was not said but where's the Jews and F the Jews were. A video of the protest shared on social media 
alleged to show a small group of people chanting, we talked about that. Uh, while police said a number of witnesses came forward and said they had heard the word gas juice spoken by protesters, an imminent independent expert in biometric science concluded with overwhelming certainty and based on many audio files submitted by the public that the phrase chanted was where's the Jews. The expert has concluded those words were said. We have relied on the evidence of the experience who experience who is imminent and very experienced expert Deputy Commissioner Mal Lanen said on Friday. He said the statements obtained from several individuals who said they heard the phrase gas to Jews could not be attributed to any specific individual. Lanen said the expert did not believe the original video was doctored. So yeah, that's kind of the, the gist of what's been said. So a lot of people going online at the moment now saying, oh, well, you know, the video was doctored and, you know, the Israeli groups and lobbies or the Jewish groups were spreading misinformation. But, you know, at, at the time when this video came out and, uh, you know, depending on today, when you listen to it with all this context and all this awareness around, you know, the raw footage being available and stuff, you can kind of hear what you want to hear. You know, if you want to hear Gas the Jews, it sounds like Gas the Jews. If you want to hear Where's the Jews, it sounds like Where's the Jews. I've listened to some of these videos, uh, even the raw videos. And again, you can hear either one that you want to hear. Now, the police have access to other footage that not the public, the public don't have access to. There were people within that circle that were filming who would have been very close. And in those videos, perhaps it's much more clearer for the expert to actually establish that what was said exactly was where's the Jews. Now, you know, regardless of what was said, obviously the, the issue becomes then what's the context around saying where's the Jews and F the Jews at a vigil for victims of October 7th, right? This is before Israel had launched any type of retaliation in relation to this. And, um, you know, you have to start to <laughs> ask yourself, isn't this almost as bad as saying gas the Jews? Now, I know the context can be completely different, but a lot of the debate and argument now is around this. Let me know what your thoughts are. Obviously, uh, you know, this is from a, a while ago now, but you can see it. there's still open wounds there related to these things. And this is not too dissimilar to the recent story that I was discussing around the Burgatory restaurant where people had attributed something that, you know, to, to the Jewish community that we found out later on that was you know, not them, right? It was some African uh, gang related thing, possibly, or other criminal related enterprise that that was responsible for the fire at Burgatory. So again, interesting times. And on Burgatory, actually, so the, na the names of the two individuals involved in, in burning or the arson attack allegedly by the police who have been arrested for this have been released to the public. Uh, one is called Habib Musa, who's 27 years old. And the other person is Wail Mana, who is 24. At least Habib Musa, that name sounds Arabic. Um, you can correct me if I am wrong. There's also a picture of the man released. So this is Habib Musa. He's one of the individuals the police are alleging is responsible for the fire at the Burgatory restaurant here in Caulfield. And he's also accused of um, burning the restaurant down, um, as well as uh, stealing a Mercedes uh, and also torching a Bendico Tupaco store on Monday. So uh, there's a history here of this individual related to multiple crimes in this space. And especially in Victoria, multiple tobacco stores have been targeted and hit. So it's a part of possibly that same crime wave that we're seeing. But this is the individual. His name is Habib Musa, and he's the person that the police are touting as being responsible for the arson attack at Burgatory Restaurant. The next story I have is an update from Rip Curl. That's right. Boycott Rip Curl. Right, Rip Curl tried to replace. Well, they wanted to replace a woman with a transgender person, and there was a massive furor over this online. Rip Curl have made somewhat of a public statement, the first one they've made, albeit to a up to a magazine of sorts, a surfing magazine. But let's just have a listen to what the representative had to say. I'll read out their statement. Uh, our Reese, our this is what this is from Rip Curl's rep. Our recent post has landed us in div in the divisive space around transgender participation in competitive sport. Mm. We want to promote surfing for everyone in a respectful way, but recognize we upset a lot of people with our post and for that we are sorry. To clarify, the surfer featured has not replaced anyone on the Rip Curl team and is not a sponsored athlete. So that's the statement that we have so far from this rep to this surfing magazine. Do, do you accept this apology? A lot of people online are already dismissing this apology saying that doesn't even mention uh, the woman uh, that was you know, let go for instance. And, you know, it doesn't really sound like a sincere apology. It seems more like we're sorry, we got, we got caught type of apology. But that's the update on Rip Curl. I wanted to show you that because, of course, 
I've been discussing them for a couple of days now. Next up, uh, this interesting story out of Britain. That's right. You know, when we think of things like Terminator or Robocop, which this story actually uses as a headline, this future, this dystopian world where, you know, these machines are, are policing us, right? We've programmed these machines with intelligence to actually do the policing in public. Well, at least one institution in, in the UK is actually putting out tenders uh, for private contractors to build some of this technology to do this. So let's have a look at this. Britain plans Robocop force to protect nuclear sites with paint bombs. AI powered drones are being designed to cut labor costs and boost security at Sellafield. Britain's nuclear sites could soon be protected by a Robocop style police force made up of AI powered drones equipped with paint bombs and smoke guns. <laughs> Just gonna stop there. I'm glad they haven't equipped them yet with the actual, you know, fully lethal weapons yet, right? Paint bombs and smoke guns for now. The Nuclear De Decommissioning Authority, which runs high security nuclear sites such as Slalafield and Donnery, wants to build a robotic police force to cut costs and boost security across sites containing radioactive waste. Now, one could make the argument here that this is to do for the fact that, you know, it's radioactive waste and they want to protect individuals from being exposed to such things. It has offered $1.5 million to secure and defense to security and defense companies for initial designs of a robotic defense system with a view to commissioning a fully fledged version in the future. The NDA's document for the project says that the key aim is to cut labor costs by reducing the number of armed police. Now, I, I won't read much more into that, but we have seen these developments over the last couple of years in robotics. We are now in an era this year, especially a lot of people are saying is the year of artificial intelligence, the year of AI. And now we're looking at combining these two things and of course it's already happening in the uh, military um, industry of course right but now we're looking at bringing it into more of the domestic space by bringing these technologies into the policing realm um, and i don't know how long it'll be before we have robot police dogs or robot policemen walking around enforcing things right I, i'd imagine they start with something like parking fines first or drones following you for speeding or something like this but eventually, I can see a world if we don't, um, you know, really build some strict rules and guidelines around this. A world where there's armed robots walking around, pointing guns at us it is quite possible. Let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, this next story I have is uh, from the U.S. Uh, again, to do with uh, you know, this is a strange kind of world that we live in today. Let me have a read of this: tampon dispenser torn from high school boy's restroom minutes after being installed. A lot of people are celebrating this, actually. A tampon dispenser installed in the boys' restroom lasted less than half an hour before being ripped out and destroyed at a Connecticut high school. In order to comply with state law, Brookfield High School installed a menstrual products dispenser in a boys' restroom at 9.30 a.m. on January 24th. The school's principal, Mark Balanda, reported that by 9.52 a.m., the dispenser had been vandalized and ripped off from the wall. In an email to the school, Balanda wrote that this, he was disgusted and dismayed by the act. I'm aware that the law says men's bathrooms, but the action today that led to vandalism and destruction of property were the work of immature boys, not men, he said. He encouraged any students with issues regarding the tampon dispenser to ask for more information. Use your words and start a dialogue rather than using your hands to destroy something. In particular, this instance, if you have questions, please let me know. Look. I'm all against vandalism and destruction of private or public property. I've spoken out against the destruction of statues and things like this. But these boys, like, why are you putting a tampon dispenser in a boy's bathroom? Like, what are you trying to force onto this, uh, into these boys, right? So, yes, these schoolboys have taken a bit of action into their own hands and ripped this dispenser off and, you know, chucked it in the toilet or whatever. I don't know. I don't know, there's a part of me that agrees with these type of actions because I think this is ridiculous, right? They shouldn't be in there in the first place. And the fact that this is a state law is equally ridiculous, right? Why is there tampon dispensers in boys' bathrooms? All right, you know, you know, you know why. I can't go into too much detail about this stuff on platforms like YouTube and Facebook. But yeah, I'm not necessarily in disagreement with the actions of these boys in destroying this particular um, tampon dispenser. Now, this next update that I want to give you is for a story from last year around, you know, March, I believe. There was a Let Women uh, Speak rally that was happening all around the country. And there was one here in Victoria as well. I was there filming at the Victorian rally and it was a bunch of women, 
of all different, you know, all different types of women, uh, all different ages and all different uh, backgrounds getting together to discuss women's rights uh, around safe spaces for women without, you know, transgender people in those spaces. So it was really around issues relating to these women. But of course, that was the activists from the transgender side came there. The far left came there. Then we had these NSN style neo-Nazi groups turn up as well. And there was a clash between those two groups while the women were speaking. And then the Nazi group kind of was pushed into that women's area by the police. But, you know, all of this sounds like a random story. You can watch my videos from the time because it's all very confusing. But what, what uh, actually happened at the end of all of that is that the Liberal Party actually kicked out one of its uh, members from the party room, Moira Deeming, who's an MP who was speaking at the women's rally on behalf of the fears expressed by her Muslim friend who wanted to use female bathrooms without having to share that space with men, right? It was a harmless speech that she was giving in support of women's rights. And because this uh, rally was gatecrashed by these groups and it became this entire thing about neo-Nazis and all this hate symbolism in our state, the party, her party, John Pesuto, effectively blamed her for being a part of this Nazi group and not walking away from it, even though that is just laughable based on what happened on that day. Like I live streamed that entire thing from start to finish. And even during my live stream, I'm expressing exactly what's happening here and how these groups are being moved around to different spaces and how they're disconnected. You can see that in the live stream. So that's actually going to court now. So in September this year, that has been set for a trial date because um, Moira Deeming is suing uh, John Pseudo for you know, implying literally that she is a Nazi for purely being at a women's rights rally speaking on behalf of women constituents, which she should be doing as a member of parliament. Now, John Pseudo is using apparently a truth defense uh, and saying that he was just expressing opinions and he didn't really call her a Nazi and all this kind of stuff. But there's so many instances when you're watching back during that time, it's very clear that the way that the, the John Pseudo and the Liberal Party are speaking about the member of par parliament, one of their colleagues really goes to, goes to show that they think that she's a Nazi. Like, that's my opinion, right? That's my truth defense based on the things that they're saying. So it's going to be a really interesting court case to watch that. And, you know, I feel like potentially they might even be using some of my live stream footage because I was one of the only people that live streamed that from the start to the finish and covered a lot of things that were going on during that time. So I will keep you updated on this case as it gets to September. And it's going to be quite, quite interesting. Anyway, guys, that's it for my news vlog today. Thank you for joining in. I know I gave a lot of updates today, but I thought there were some interesting updates to give on the news. Now, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, please consider subscribing. You can follow me here on YouTube. Uh, you can hit the subscribe button or you can hit the notification bell um, at The Real Rukshan. You can also find me on X, Facebook, Instagram, Rumble. So I've started fixing up my Rumble now. I didn't realize that Rumble had broken its link with YouTube because normally my YouTube videos would automatically sync to Rumble. Even like my um, videos from YouTube automatically, automatically sync to my Odyssey. It's so convenient. And it used to work with Rumble for a long time, but YouTube has done some dodgy business and you know disallowed that process from happening. And Rumble's trying to fix it apparently with the lawyers from YouTube, but who knows, right? Rumble's cutting their cake, <laughs> eating, eating YouTube's um, sandwich, cutting YouTube's lunch sandwich. What's the phrase, tell me? that's happening at the moment so i think youtube just disallowed them from doing that so i have manually started uploading from my episodes from february into rumble as well anyway guys off on a tangent see you tomorrow